Awesome, awesome, awesome. It's... We're in the house again. Yep. Praise God for His grace and praise God for His mercy, for His love, His goodness, His kindness, His compassion, His favor, His love, His joy, His peace. You know, there's so much words we can go on to express our gratefulness and our gratitude to be here once again to just be in God's presence with His fellow children. And um, I don't know about you, but there's one word that's been coming up over and over and over again today is identity. Yeah. You know, God is just doing something with us this month, you know, trying to hone into us to know who we are, you know. And even the young lions, <laughs> they're lions, you know, they're not cubs anymore, they're, they're lions. And they're talking about who they are and what God has been speaking to them about. And, and um, we just know that, you know, from since two weeks ago, when Blake started about new beginnings and clear about the supernatural. And today we continue with our identity, you know, who we are. You know, at work, when I go into work, I'm privileged um, to, because of my role with working with printers and so on, I'm privileged to go into every room except the theater room the operating room because obviously that's the most um you know sensitive place but i go into many rooms and when i when i go into the room i've got to identify identify who i am because i'm just stepping into their zone you know i say i am john i'm here from xerox i'm coming to check your printer blah 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 and they said, oh, fine, we know who you are, you know. So straight away, people know who you are. Or I go into a room and they don't really know who I am. They say, who are you? Some do it nicely, some do it abruptly. <laughs> and so I got to calm myself down. I said, my name is John. I work for Xerox. I'm here to check your printer to see what might be the problem so I can, you know, assess whatever it is. And I said, oh, yeah, Xerox, yeah, fine, good. So straight away, identity is very important. We can't do anything without identity. And that is why God is showing us very clearly, identity is the key thing for us as Christians. In my nice little small island of Montserrat, people will see me and they'll say, oh, who are you? I said, my name is Junior. Wilson. I said, oh, you are John Wilson's son. So straight away, they identified me with my father. Oh, and they say, oh, you look like your father. So straight away, they associated me in my father, and through my physical appearance, they can match me up with my father. Or they might say, who is my mother? Idris Wilson. Oh, I know Idris. Oh, you look like Idris. Or you behave like Idris. So identity is very, very important. And the question is, is who are you? And who am I? I might be the, the son of my father, John Wilson. I might be the, the son of my mother, Idris Wilson. But, I, but that is my physical identity. The question for you and me is, where is and who is my spiritual identity? And for us, we got to go back, as Claire did last week, back to the foundation. I know sometimes we got to repeat ourselves because it is, it is God's way of getting us to understand what he's saying. So last week, you got to hear something being said. This week is the same thing. I can guarantee you, for those of us who have been speaking here, we have not been calling each other to say, what are we going to say? I can tell you, I prepared this three weeks ago before even Claire spoke. And she said, start the very way I'm going to start. Foundation is only, our identity is found only in God. Yeah. Our physical identity might identify with our DNA in terms of our physical appearance. But who we are is spirit. 
Yes, we are flesh, but our identity has got to be in our spirit. And for us, there's nowhere else we can go but back to the beginning, back to the foundation of where did we as human beings come from. So therefore, we got to go back into Genesis. Genesis chapter 1. And we're going to go straight back. Guys, we're repeating ourselves, but we've got to get to know the foundation. Because that is where we're going to know who we are. And therefore, when we know who we are, then we can go forward. Because there's a battle that we know that we're in. And the battle des deserves and needs a conqueror. So let's go into the foundation is Genesis chapter 1. And we pick up from verse 26 to 28. We may have it on the overhead. Yes. Then God said, He didn't say uh, <laughs> any other physical name. He says, God said, Let us make man in our image according to our likeness. And before I go on, keep the word our. Because God is not just one, He's three God the Father, God the Son. God the Holy Spirit. And that's why he says, let us make man in our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over cattle, over the earth, and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Then God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over every living thing that moves on the earth. God said, let us create man in my image. And in my image, you have the power to subdue. You have the power to dominate. It says, subdue it and have dominion in it. As children of God, our spiritual DNA has a built-in ability to subdue all things and to dominate all things. And that is why when man was created, we had the authority to have dominion. Dominion means authority. Subdue means to have control over. So in our DNA, in our spiritual DNA, we had the ability, as children of God, to, ha to have the ability to subdue and to have dominion. So that's where we start off. Let's move on to Genesis chapter 2, uh, verses 8 to 9. Let's keep the picture in our mind, yeah? The Lord God planted a garden in eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. And out of the ground the Lord gave God made every tree grow that is in, in its present to the sight and good for food. The tree of life was also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Let's move on to verse 15, verse 17. Then the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to tend and to keep. And the Lord God commanded, saying, Of every tree of the garden you may freely eat, but of the tree of knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die we have dominion we have power we have we have power over everything but god has given us an instruction there's a specific tree i love this fruit you are not allowed to eat of it because as when you eat of this tree you shall surely die we move on further into genesis chapter 2 the same chapter 2 we go on to 20 to 22. And I'm going through it because I want the young people to really grasp this, or those of you who have never heard the gospel to hear it, or those listening on YouTube to kind of grasp this or know this and to understand who we are and what we have to go through as human beings, and to know the power that we had over everything. In verse 20, it says, Adam, not God, but it says, Adam gave names to all cattle. Imagine that we have the power 
We have the authority because we are now created in God's image. Whatever God says comes to pass. Whatever God says exists. And here man has the power to name every cattle. Every animal that is out there was named by Adam. That is the authority, that is the power that God gave man through Adam. It says Adam gave names to all cattle, to the birds of the air, to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found a helper comparable to him. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall on Adam, and he slept. And he took up his ribs and closed up the flesh in his place. Then the rib which the Lord, gave, Lord God had taken from the man, he made into a woman, and he brought her to man. So here we have women on the scene, having the same power, having the same authority to subdue and to have dominion over the earth. So everything is going nice and rosy. Adam and Eve is in the garden, you know, walking in God's power, walking in the coolness of the atmosphere, no clothes on, shame, no disgrace, no arguments, you know, nothing to kind of upset them. And everything is going nice until we get to Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3, here comes a serpent. It says the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, Has God indeed said you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? There begins the battle. When God says, the enemy comes in with a question, opposing question, putting doubts and questioning God's power and authority. The devil, it says, was a deceiver and he was cunning and he used the snake to get to the woman and ask, has God indeed said you shall not eat of the tree of the garden? And I said to you, until this time, man was full of power, full of authority, full of wisdom, full of love, full of joy, full of peace. And we know from that time onwards, everything changed. We jump to Genesis 6, verse 6 to 7. When the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree desirable to make one wise, she took up its fruit and ate. She gave to her husband and he ate. Then the eyes of both of them were opened and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves a covering. Then to Adam he said, Because you have heeded the voice of the wife and have eaten from the tree which I commanded you, saying, You shall not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for your sake. In toil you shall eat all of his days. Both thorns and thistle shall it bring forth. You shall eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of your face you shall eat bread till you return to the ground. For out of it you were taken. For dust you are, and to dust you shall return. There is where our future, our whole mankind race changed from a life of glory, power, and authority to a life no, that we now know is called sin. The curse of sin and death became our enemy. From that day onward, when Adam and Eve ate the, 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 the apple, that we did the fruit that was forbidden from the tree, we became slaves to sin. Now, another word slave is not a word that we like to use this day, but that was a word that was used in scripture. Because when we become slaves, it means that we are bound, we are held, uh, we, are in, we, we, we have no freedom. We have, we, we've lost that freedom, we have lost that joy because we became slaves to sin. From that day onward, we had an enemy, and that enemy 
we can boldly say today is Satan the devil. We got to be aware of it because if we don't, then we will lose our identity in who we are. We are in a battle and that battle was, is within our enemy. What did sin bring? Sin brought tribulation. You can look all around us, guys. It's here. It brought distress. It brought persecution. It brought famine. It brought peril. It brought wars. There was a time when I did not believe any of this. Even though it's around you, wars, poverty, peril, persecution from your friends and your family and your neighbors and your co-workers, tribulation was, is all around us. We only got to turn on the news right now and we can see the tribulation that we're in with diseases. We're struggling to find cures for diseases that are coming rampantly as we carry on. We are in a, in a world where sin has brought disruption. The enemy is out there trying to destroy us through tribulation, distress, persecution, famine, perils, war. But you know what? We can rejoice because God has a plan for us. A plan of restoration. A plan that was demonstrated in his son, Jesus Christ. I want to jump to a famous scripture that we have. Romans chapter 8, verse 35 to 37. It begins like this. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, peril, sword? As it is written, for your sake, we are killed all day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. I don't know about you, but there are times when I feel like I'm, I'm in a battle here, when I feel like a sheep, helpless, unable to overcome the different challenges that are coming against us in this life, in this world. Verse 37 says, Yet, in all these things, Yet, in tribulation, in, in wars, in famine, in persecution, in distress, in sickness, in disease, pain and sorrow, hatred and violence, murder and theft, in all these things, we, which is the Christ, the church, we who believe, we who surrender our lives to Christ, we who are the children of God, we are more than conquerors. Not through um, the prime minister or the presidents, but through Jesus Christ, he says, who loved us and gave his life for us. Paul encourages us that we are more than conquerors through Christ who loved us. The question is, how did Christ love you? And I thought about that last night. I went back to the gospel and I looked at the story of Christ and the crucifixion. And I tried to put myself in Christ's position. In the Caribbean, we have thorns. We call them a word called kusha. Right? And if you, they're underground. And if you, if you go close to this tree, you know, it digs you, you feel the pain. Or sometimes we are not wearing shoes and it's underground. And it goes into your foot. I, I mean, some of you, uh, you won't experience that. But we can tell you, African Caribbean, we have those things on the ground. And we play around with those shoes and it goes in your leg. And you're going to take hours to get it out. Pain. I think about it. A crown of thorns forced on your head with blood pouring out. Not only that, you have a crown, you put a, a, a cross on your back. To travel miles down the road. When you get to the top of the hill, you're laid out on a cross, and, uh, and, 
a nail, not a, a nail is, 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 is pounded into your left hand. Not just one hand, then your right hand. You still have the crown of thorns on your head. You still have 39 lashes on your back. You got your left hand nailed with a metal nail, a metal nail. And on top of that, you got your foot, your feet nailed to the cross. And you think all is done and well. And then they take a spear and pierce your side. And when I thought about that, that is love. God so loved the world that he sent his only son, Jesus Christ, to die for us so that we may have life and have it more abundantly so that we can conquer. The reason why we can conquer is because Jesus already conquered Satan. He's already conquered tribulation, fear, war, peril, persecution. So because Jesus has conquered for us, we, as joined heirs, as children of God, have the ability to conquer. I can tell you there are times when I don't think I'm conquering. So as I stand here talking to you, I myself need to know that I'm a conqueror. That I can overcome despite what the flesh tells me. The sickness and the fears and the worries and the anxieties and the nerves and the uncertainty that the enemy throws against us. We know that Christ says we are more than conquerors. What does conqueror mean? Conqueror means to defeat, to subdue, to overthrow, to overcome, to take control. Who are we battling? It's important to know in our identity. Who are we battling? There's no doubt about it. We gotta, we gotta say it and say it boldly. Satan is our enemy. Why is it everybody questions? Is who is God? Is God real? Why is so and so happening? I work in a hospital where children die every day. I keep saying it because it humbles me. Every day, children are dying. Why? Because the curse of sin came. And we are fighting an enemy who will come to seek, to kill, and to destroy. John 10.10 10 says, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. While I am standing here, the enemy is planning. While you're sitting there, he's planning. Because his goal is to destroy our lives. But Jesus came that we can live, we can overcome, and that we can have control. We can overcome, we can subdue, we can defeat through Jesus Christ. Ephesians 6.12 says this, and this is our problem. We look around at our neighbors, our families, our work colleagues, and we think they are the problem. And we get angry and we curse and we get dis disagreements. When the battle is, it says this, Ephesians 6.12, put it on the screen here if I can. I want everybody on YouTube and here to see and understand it. Whether you're from North America, South America, Caribbean, Asia, Middle East, Israel, wherever. It says we fight not against flesh and blood, but principalities against powers, rulers of the darkness of the world, against spiritual wickedness in high place. So when we see people getting angry and upset and evil, we know that it's, it, it's, it is the devil It is inside our so souls and spirit that is trying to come up with ideas and, and, and actions to destroy each other. When we got to do it, is pray for them. Be patient with them. Be kind to them. Be gentle because you know what? It's a spiritual battle. It's not a fleshly battle. It is a spiritual battle. So know who we are battling. What is our battle? As I said, the battle is, is for our souls. If Satan could get us not accepting Jesus Christ, he knows that at the end, he knows what the end is. He says the end is, is hell if we don't accept Christ. 
So the battle is the salvation of our souls. It's keeping our faith. It's overcoming temptations. It's overcoming addictions. It's overcoming mental and physically physical illness. It's overcoming poverty. It's overcoming negative thoughts and imaginations. That is where our battle is. So how do we fight that battle? How do you and I overcome the addictions, the temptations to the flesh? How do we overcome illnesses and disease that is around us these days? We fight, but we don't fight in our own strength. We fight with the power of the Holy Spirit that's made available to us through Jesus Christ. Zechariah 4 verse 6 says, Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. So when we become born again, and I'm praying that everyone who hears my voice that would accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, so that we can be filled with the Spirit, so that we have the battle strength with the Spirit's help to overcome the difficulties. So we fight not in our own selves, but we fight with the power of the Holy Spirit. We fight with faith that God has given us. He says if we have faith as small as a mustard seed, we can move the mountains. I don't know about you, but there are mountains surrounding me, personally. And we all have a mountain. Every one of us has a battle going on. We may not physically say it, but inwardly, physically, spiritually, we are all fighting a battle. We all have obstacles. We all have mountains. But when we speak the word of God, we have the power to conquer. Our testimony that we speak has power. Our words of declaration have power. Our praise have power. Our prayers and our petitions for family, friends, loved ones have power. Our worship has power. Those are the tools that we have available to us in Christ Jesus with the help of the Holy Spirit to overcome. And the more that we engage and the more that we understand this, the more that we know we can fight the battle. So we can't go into the battle empty-handed. We've got to go prepared with these things that God gives us. The Word of God, our testimony, our praise, our worship, our declaration, our battle is not a one-off battle. Our battle for us to, be, to know that we are conquerors is ongoing. We got to be on the alert that we got we we to gotta continue over and over. We might have been praying for certain things and we have not seen the victory yet, but the victory is coming. We got to hang on. We got to persevere because the battle is not short, but it's long. Sometimes God works miraculously instantly, and he does that many times. But lots of time, some things stretch along, but we can endure it and um, we can overcome. We fight the battle with confidence, knowing that Jesus is with us. When I spoke about the fact that our battle is continuous, remember, Jesus went through what we have already what we're now facing. In Luke chapter 4, if you can recall, when the Lord was taken out into the wilderness and was tempted for 40 days and 40 nights, the scripture says that after the devil failed in his temptation, it says he departed for a season. So we got to know, even though we are victorious, the enemy is not going to stop. There are going to be darts coming left, right, center. Sometimes we win one battle, and next one pops up. We overcome one thing, and next one comes up. But yes, we've got to understand, we are conquerors. Conquerors, we've got to fight, we've got to push on, we've got to overcome. Because the devil is only for season. 
His goal is, to, is, is until God comes, is to try and get us not to enter our heavenly kingdom that God has prepared for us. We fight in our own strength. In Psalm 18, when we go in the Lord's strength, David recognized this. And he said, I will love you, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. My God, my strength in whom I will trust. He is my shield and the horn of my salvation. My stronghold, I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So I shall be saved from my enemies. Like David, we got to be saved from our enemy. We got to conquer, but we conquer in the strength that God gives us. Because he is our rock. He is our fortress. David also recognizes when he fought against the Philistine. Again, the name of the Lord is a powerful weapon. David said to the Philistines in 1 Samuel 17, verse 47, You come to me with a sword, with a spear, and with a javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts. The God of Israel that you have defied, I come to you in his name. When we come, we got to speak in God's name. we got to speak with the authority that God gives us, that as conquerors, we are able and, 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 and we have the power and the authority that God has given us to speak God's word with authority because we are more than conquerors. So a few points I just want to leave with you before we conclude. As we continue to encourage our hearts that we are more than conquerors. Sometimes we don't feel so in the flesh, but in the spirit we are. So if we continue to trust in the Lord, we will know that we are conquerors. While we are in the battle, we got to be prepared. And clear said this last week. We can't go into battle prepared without, without being prepared. And the whole armor of God is what we need to put on in order for us to be protected while we are in the battle. Ephesians 6 tells us again, the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, our waist girded with truth, the shield of faith, the sword of the Spirit, our feet shed with the preparation of the gospel. When we give our lives to Christ, when we are born again, when we become the redeemed children of God, we have salvation. We have righteousness, we have faith, we have the Spirit of God, we have the Word of God, we have the truth of God, and we're prepared to go out and to declare that to other people. John 16, verse 33, Jesus has overcome. Because he has overcome, as I said on the cross, we have the ability to overcome and to conquer. When we become weary in battle, I can encourage you, find family and friends to support you. Because the battle can't be won on our own. The battle needs supporters. It needs encouragers. We need warriors. We need comrades. In Exodus 17, Joshua had a battle. But he needed Moses. He needed Aaron. He needed her. When Joshua and his, and his arm was fighting, Moses was on the hilltop with his staff lifted up. And it says when Moses lifted up the staff, Joshua won in battle. When he dropped his hand, Joshua started losing. Thousands of men started dying. When Moses So, we need one another. We need one another praying. We need one another encouraging. We need our support. We need to have each, each other's back so that we can be more than 
conquerors. We need Jesus who defeated Satan on the cross. Again, at the beginning, I said to you, when sin came into the world, we lost dominion, we lost our ability to subdue, we lost power, we lost authority, we lost victory. But when Jesus Christ laid out himself on the cross, died on the cross, he said he died and was buried. He went down to the grave and he conquered death, hell, and the grave. And it says he rose again and ascended into heaven and is seated on the right hand of God the Father. And today he has sent his Holy Spirit to convict us, to redeem us, to save us. And because we have the Spirit of God in us, we are more than conquerors. I want to remind you something. It says Satan is a roaring lion. He's a roaring lion. He's not going to give up trying to destroy us. But there is not just one lion. There's a roaring lion, but it's a lion of Judah. We've got a lion of Judah on our side. The lion is out there roaring the enemy, but we have a lion of Judah that's victorious and has already won the battle. So the question is for you and I, who is our identity? Is our identity in Christ? Is our foundation in God, knowing that God says that we are his creation, that we are the seeds of Abraham, that we are the children of God, that we have the victory, that we have more than conquerors through Christ who loved us. Do you know that Christ loves you? If you don't know that today, whether you're on YouTube or here, believe me what I tell you, that Jesus Christ loves you so much that he died on the cross for you. To forgive you and me of our sins, that we may have life abundantly, not just abundantly, but life eternally. I don't know what problems you are facing today. I don't know what challenge you're facing. I don't know what, we need, what you need to conquer. But I stand here, I know that every one of us listen to my voice or watching on YouTube. Every one of us have got a battle in our hands. Every one of us have got something that we need to conquer financially, physically, emotionally, spiritually. We have got challenges. So I'm saying today as I, I leave, know that Christ is your Redeemer and Savior, that you're more than conquerors. While the worship band comes, um, I know a lot of times that the things that are really <sighs> battling us, we can't say it verbally. Sometimes there's so things, some things which are, which are uh, 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 overpowering us that we can't, we don't, we feel maybe ashamed to declare what's happening. But God sees on the inside. Man looks on the outside, but God sees on the inside. So whatever is inside, whatever is in your life, whatever is around that is, that is holding you down, that is, is in a battle for you, give it to the Lord Jesus Christ. If you want to come to the front and have people surround you and pray for you, encourage you, do so. But wherever you are, standing or sitting, and I pray that you will stand with me in faith, that God, you who loved us and, and care for us, are going to deliver us and rescue us. And we're going to be the children of God who will conquer. Because you know what? The last enemy that was defeated was death and the grave. If there's any fear of death, we've got to know today, in Christ, we are more than conquerors. We are children who will be raised from death into life, to life eternally. Let us pray. I want to stand with me, and I'm going to pray, and then I'm going to ask the worship band to lead us, and if you feel like you want a prayer for anything, you can come to the front. But from where you are, just lay your heart to the Lord and say, Lord, this is my need. This is my challenge. This is my problem. This is my difficulty. This is my desires. This is what is haunting me every day, night and, and day. But God said his grace is sufficient for us. So we thank him. Father, we thank you for today. 
We thank you, Lord, that we can stand knowing that our identity is in you, our heavenly Father. You're not our earthly father. We have our earthly father, but God, we thank you that you're our Abba Father. We thank you, Father, that you've sent us your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, who is on your right hand, looks down upon us, who made the sacrifice that we can have life and have it more abundantly, that we can have eternal life. And we thank you, Lord, that the Holy Spirit has come to empower us, to help us to know that we are more than conquerors, that we can overcome that we can stand having done all, that we can put on the whole armor to stand against the wiles of the devil. No weapon formed against us shall prosper because Jesus, you are our covering. You are our covering, your shield, your rock, you are our refuge, you are our stronghold. Today we come to lay down our burdens, those things which are hitting us left, right and center, which seem to be not coming to an end. We thank you, Lord, that the victory is in you and that we can conquer through the blood of Jesus Christ. So, Father, as we worship you today, let your spirit come and refresh our hearts and our minds and our souls. And we all pray this today, whether we're on YouTube or in this church or where we are in the globe, whether we're in hospitals or prisons or wherever we are, Father God, let this word go forth to bring encouragement to our hearts, we pray, in no other name but Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you.